Welcome back to German history with a German accent. My name is still Wolf, W-O-L-F, just like the animal. And before I start this video about Friedrich Ebert, I'd like to explain the recent lack of videos. If you're not interested in hearing the reasons, check out the description box where I put the timestamp for the start of Friedrich Ebert's history. After finishing my last video about Ernst Thälmann, my wife and I bought and remodeled a house for the first time, which turned out to be quite challenging. Besides the remodel, we also run our company, Crackle and Woodfired Pizza. We now ship dough balls and other pizza products throughout the United States. Those two activities took about 100 to 110% of my time. Now I'm getting back to it. Most likely the amount of videos per week will still be lower than before the break, but I figure it's better than nothing. But now let's get started with Friedrich Ebert. Friedrich Ebert was born on February 4th, 1871 in Heidelberg, as seventh of nine children to Karl and Katharina Ebert. He had been baptized as a Catholic, but he left church before he became a Reichstag member in the year 1912. Ebert underwent training as saddle maker from 1885 until 1888. Once he finished his training, he traveled around in the western region of Germany following the journeyman year tradition. While being in Mannheim, he got to know the socialist and unionized movement. In 1889, Friedrich Ebert joined the Socialist Workers' Party of Germany, which would eventually become the Social Democratic Party of Germany, which still exists today. I also made a video about this party, you'll find it in the top right of this video. In the year 1891, Friedrich Ebert moved to Bremen, where he would spend the next 14 years. Besides working for the party and unions, he also became an editor at the Bremer Bürgerzeitung, the local party's newspaper. Friedrich Ebert also ran a restaurant, which he didn't like and he even refused to put it in his resume. This restaurant would become a meeting point for both members of the Social Democratic Party as well as unions. While he ran the restaurant, many laborers had been seeking him out to report about their problems. This caused the social politics to become the key factor in Ebert's political work. Friedrich Ebert believed that government assistance for the workers was necessary to fight the acute social problems. This became more important for him than the hope of the breakdown of capitalism and establishing a new economic system. As a side note, it took the Social Democratic Party until 1959 to accept the market economy in the Godesberger program. In May 1894, Friedrich Ebert married Louise Rump, and the couple had five children. In the year 1900, Friedrich Ebert was able to end his restaurant work to become a worker union secretary. In this occupation, he advised both union as well as non-union members in social and justice questions. From 1899 until 1905, Friedrich Ebert was a member of the parliament in Bremen. During his time in the parliament, Ebert partially distanced himself from Marxist ideas of the party and became more moderate. In the year 1905, Friedrich Ebert was elected as party secretary in Berlin, making him part of the party leadership. In the year 1912, Friedrich Ebert was successfully elected in the German Reichstag for the first time. Despite being new in the parliament, Ebert was elected into the parliamentary leadership of the party where he continued to focus on social politics. In the following year, Friedrich Ebert became August Weber's successor as chairman of the Social Democratic Party together with Hugo Hase. Ebert believed his main job to be to keep the party's left and right wings from drifting apart too far, as well as the improvement of the life situations of the people over ideology discussions. During the First World War, Friedrich Ebert, who voted in favor of the war financing loans, kept trying to hold the Social Democratic Party together. For the most part, this worked until the year 1916, 
when the opposition in the party rose and Ebert was only elected by a small majority to be the chairman. He lost votes from both the left and right wings of the party. In March of 1916, Hugo Hase was forced to resign. When the left-wing war opponents were expelled from the parliament and the party, they reorganized and launched the USPD, the Independent Social Democratic Party. In January 1918, Friedrich Ebert participated in a strike organized by ammunition factory workers for better life and working conditions as well as for ending the world war and democratizing the constitution of the German Reich. He did participate in this strike involving more than a million workers because he felt their goals were legit, but also to bring it to an end quickly. After the war, this backfired at him. The political left believed him to be a traitor to the laborers and the political right thought of his actions as high treason. By the end of the First World War, Friedrich Ebert tried his best to prevent a socialist revolution similar like the one that happened in Russia. Therefore, the SPD joined a new government under Prince Max von Baden, who was chosen to be the new Chancellor of the German Reich to negotiate a ceasefire. Since the Supreme Army Command under Paul von Hindenburg and Erich Ludendorff wanted to blame the parliament for the inevitable defeat. Friedrich Ebert, by the end of the war, switched his views of being a Republican to be somewhat of a monarchist, since he believed that the German people would not be able to accept a republic so rapidly. He had hoped for a parliamentarian monarchy, but without Wilhelm II. After the Kiel mutiny launched a nationwide socialist revolution in the German Empire, the majority SPD called for a general strike in Berlin. On November 9, 1918, Prince Max von Baden announced that the German Emperor had abdicated and was to transfer the Chancellor position to Friedrich Ebert. But it was Philipp Scheidemann's declaration of the German Republic that put Ebert in the lead of the revolution that he tried to keep within the parliamentarian ways. Friedrich Ebert named members of both the majority and independent SPD into his cabinet. Ebert was supported by Wilhelm Gröner and the Supreme Army Command. Ebert used the army to march into Berlin to end the civil war-like situation. Due to this civil war-like situation in Berlin, the Constituent Assembly evaded to Weimar, where Friedrich Ebert had been elected to the first Reich President of the newly formed German Republic. In this position, he was constantly attacked from both political left and right wings. One example was the publishing of a photography where he was only wearing a Speedo, which at this time was very inappropriate. The new president deemed the Treaty of Versailles as unbearable but he knew that Germany had no alternative other than signing it. Like many other politicians, he planned to revise the treaty in the future. During the Kap Ludwitz Putsch in the year 1920, Friedrich Ebert had to flee Berlin. An order for the Reichswehr to end the coup d'etat had been ignored by the military under the motto, troops are not shooting at troops but the Reichswehr followed the order to overthrow a socialist uprisings in the Ruhr region in the same year. Since Friedrich Ebert had been elected at the Constituent Assembly instead of by the German people, as it was written down in the Weimar Constitution, a new election date was planned multiple times, but due to the unstable political situation, the election date was postponed repeatedly. During his time as Reich President, Friedrich Ebert used his constitutional powers, especially Article 48, the Emergency Decrees, to pass laws without support of the Parliament. For example, during the year 1923 at the Beer Hall Putsch and at the monetary reform resulting in cu cutting social benefits. A court in Magdeburg in late 1924 
find a journalist for insulting the Reich's president. The journalist was calling him a traitor to his country since he participated in the strike of ammunition manufacturers in 1918. But the court also granted that Friedrich Ebert had indeed committed treason. In order to be able to testify, Friedrich Ebert did not seek medical help after becoming ill. Friedrich Ebert died on February 28, the year 1925, due to a septic shock caused by appendicitis at the age of 54 in Berlin. He was posthumously acquitted in the year 1931. Thank you so much for watching.